Hidden within this video will be five Easter eggs referencing older videos on this channel. And if you do not catch those references, you are not a true fan. Uh, first thing I want to be very clear, that opening was a joke. Please don't drive yourself crazy combing through this trying to find references to older videos. Though maybe I shouldn't have said that because I'll probably just end up rambling myself silly and people will just find stuff that resembles stuff I've said before anyway. And that could have been engagement. I blew it. Dang my conscience! Anyways, I want to talk about continuity and lore, which are slightly different, but they are related, and especially in the manner in which I want to talk about them today, which is asking the question, does continuity actually help storytelling, or is it a hindrance? Because at a certain point, continuity and trying to maintain it starts to really hamper what creative people can do. Let's back up a little. Let's actually sort of just acknowledge that there is a value to be had in continuity and with lore. With continuity, it's just nice to know that the stuff that you have already engaged with, that you have some interest in, that you are committing to, that you are you know, taking enjoyment from and spending your time with, that it's not just acting like, oh, well, forget about all the stuff you've taken in before. What we're going to do has nothing to do with it. It just feels nice, like your work is being acknowledged and appreciated that you have stuck around with the property for however many books, issues of a comic, entries in a film franchise, television sequels, whatever. For however long you've been doing it, it can be rewarding to be like, oh, it's nice that this is staying consistent. So there is some value in it. Although to um, slightly reword a quote from uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, uh, continuity is a little bit like having access to adult entertainment in a hotel room. It's a nice thing to have, but if it's not there, it's kind of hard to explain why it's so important to you. And I want to distinguish between continuity and serialized storytelling. Because when you're dealing with a serial story, one designed from the beginning to be a serial story, that's not really what I'm talking about. Because if everything that we're experiencing is intended to be multiple chapters of a single continuous narrative, then yes, there should be continuity because this is all one story. So within, say, the Lord of the Rings franchise, yeah, there should probably be continuity between Fellowship of the Ring and to Two Towers and then over to Return of the King because that is one narrative. So yeah, there should be continuity and it should be consistent. What I'm talking about is more how necessary is it for The Hobbit to maintain continuity with Lord of the Rings, for The Silmarillion to maintain continuity. I mean, it would be nice but do we need it? So I needed to make that clarification because otherwise I suspect the comments would have derailed and like, well, what about all these stories that are telling you? We're not talking about that. I think something like, honestly, comic books, most superhero, uh, well, the original comic books and superhero adaptations, be they TV shows or things like the MCU or the now rebooted continuity of the DC movies, I sort of rebooted, We'll see if Flash ends up being an actual full-on reboot or exactly how that's going to work. But things like that, um, or Star Wars, does the continuity help? Because a lot of those stories exist independent of each other. They're within the same, same setting. They are using the same characters. And obviously, continuity is important insofar as completely contradicting what came before without some kind of acknowledgement that something's changed that feels like a mistake when characters are inconsistent, when you aren't able to hold true to the journey a character went through and you just roll them back to how they were, you know, several stages back and ignoring character development. Things like Doctor Who get accused of that. You can take that with the character of the Master. Uh, the previous incarnation before our most recent one was Michelle Gomez as Missy, who was a character with an arc. 
I would hesitate to call it redemption, but she was on a path to be better, not be the villain. And then we have Sasha Dewan, who came after, who is very much just living his best villain life. And there's some distaste in that. Some people taking it as, well, you just rolled back her character development. It's a question of whether it's actually a continuity problem because you're just ignoring what came before. Of course, that's continuity in terms of character journeys and characterization. There's, of course, just the basic nuts and bolts continuities, such as you have a character making use of an item that they lost three stories ago. So, you know, if the doctor's sonic screwdriver is destroyed, and then three episodes later, he just has it again, well, you probably should explain why he's got that back, because otherwise, you just weren't paying attention. And while I don't agree with, I don't disagree with that, does it actually matter? Here's the weird thing about continuity. Continuity for a very long time and lore by association, I guess I'll distinguish before I get an, into this point. Lore is a bit more, not necessarily the stuff that is actively in the stories we are being told, but this is all the background information, the world building, the history, all the, the ins and outs of how the greater world works that are not necessarily particularly highlighted or even brought up within the main narrative themselves. So lore, I'll just say up front, I don't care about lore. I've never cared about lore. In my mind, and I'm not saying lore has no value, but me personally, I'm not really in a good position to judge lore because I don't care. If your story is engaging me in and of itself, then maybe I'll look a little into like the background or the history of the world or the setting or the other characters. But if you told me a really good story, then I'm just going to be happy with that story. Some people do like to engage with that, do like to look into the stuff. But if you ever create a piece of work that is not fulfilling or doesn't make sense or isn't rewarding unless you've taken in all the lore, or if you create like a second or third entry in a franchise that instead of just building directly off the previous entry is building off a ton of lore that other people needed to sink a lot of time into separate from having taken in the previous work, that to me is a big problem. And I bring up lore because it's going to kind of feed into where I'm going with explaining why continuity can be a problem. But to the point I was making a minute ago, continuity is a slightly weird thing within fandoms because for a long time, knowing continuity at all was kind of a mark of status. It was a real way to embody the level of commitment to a fandom. To know what issue a superhero encountered a certain person or acquired a certain item or the first appearance of a certain villain. To know that stuff or to know the full background of the Silmarillion and the entire history of Middle Earth and not just know the plot of Lord of the Rings was kind of, like I said, a little bit of a mark of status and it felt special. Because I am old enough to remember the world before the internet. And in the world before the internet, if you wanted to know about all the other stuff that had gone on in Star Wars after The Return of the Jedi, you had to read a lot of books. And there was a certain sense of, let's be frank, superiority that some fans had who had committed to all of that. And whether or not that sense of superiority is healthy for a fandom, uh, it can get weird, it can get gatekeepery. But I think it made a little bit more sense to be taking that pride in knowing continuity, in knowing lore, back when you literally had to do a hell of a lot of legwork. Like, why, as we got into the 90s, you started to get, like, encyclopedias for characters or settings. But if it was a continuing thing, those are going to be outdated in a year anyways. But, you know, you, there would be things like that, and certain, but you'd still have to pay for them. You'd have to have access to them. And you'd have to buy them. And the Internet kind of changed everything. The Internet, even in its early days, even pre-Google, you had tons of sites where... Fans who did know this stuff were compiling all the information, making reference sheets 
for all this stuff, all the continuity. And now these days, yeah, basically any continuity connection or mistake, it's a Google search away. You can look up a Wikipedia, and if a thing has been running long enough, the continuity errors alone will probably have their own Wikipedia page. But that makes it so it's odd that many fans still latch on to continuity the way that they do when it's not really a mark of status anymore. Knowing the continuity isn't really the same level of commitment that it used to be. And again, if you take enjoyment out of knowing all that stuff off the top of your head, I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm glad that that is how you found a way to fulfill yourself and feel rewarded with a fandom. That's fine. That's terrific even. But that brings me back to the question, how much does continuity actually matter? Especially now, because it used to be, like in a comic book in, say, the 80s, it used to be that when a minor, again, minor continuity error, not like, oh, I forgot this character was dead or something ridiculous like that, but a minor continuity error, like where a character lives or how two characters first met or something that ultimately, yes, the fans know that because they have access to all of the knowledge and the information that they have read and they have stored that up. Whereas the writer, especially if they're a writer for hire, they're just coming in, going off a, you know, a series Bible and just going, okay. And if any of that hasn't been updated or there's a detail missing, they don't know it often. So there's all that at play with something like a comic book. And in, like I said, in the eighties or so, round about then, if a writer got something wrong, it was only going to be the hardcore fans and the hardcore nerds who were ever going to notice. Your average reader, even if they suspected something was off or, was, or wasn't quite right, what were they going to do? Read every issue to find out that something was wrong? Now everybody can catch continuity errors. Now, by the same token, theoretically, continuity errors at this point should be easier to avoid because this information is all searchable. But that brings me to my ultimate question that I want to ask with this. Are we harming the ability of storytellers to actually tell stories with an excessive focus on continuity? And short version, yeah, a bit. One of the things about continuity is it's cute and fun and enjoyable, certainly at first, but the longer it goes on, it compounds. The complexity compounds the number of things that you either have already done within the narrative or you now can't do because doing so would contradict something else that has already happened or something that has been established. It just makes it harder. There's a reason that many properties, long-running properties, as they go on, have a tendency to get really repetitive because the continuity and what's been established, and where things make sense to go, logistically and in terms of character dynamics, if it's just perpetuating, well, eventually there are going to be ideas that creators have that like, well, I can't do that. That just doesn't work. That's why you tend to get a lot of rollbacks on things. This is where retconning comes in, fundamentally. Sometimes uh, something gets retconned in a story because, well, maybe it wasn't the best idea in the first place. But most of the time, when something gets retconned, uh, if you aren't familiar with the term, it's retroactive continuity. When something gets retconned, it's generally because the retcon is the only way to give the creator access to something they can't otherwise do. So the classic example is, if a villain's dead, but the creator wants to tell a story with that villain again, kind of pulling from comic books, easiest way to do that is to just retcon their death somehow or other. Now, to distinguish, a retcon is not the same as like the villain is brought back to life with magic or Frankenstein science or something. No, the retcon says, oh no, they didn't actually die in the first place. 
And in some cases, a retcon is less egregious, depending on the setting. It might be more reasonable to just be like, oh, no, you thought they died, but they didn't, than to go, and they are back from the dead. Depends on the setting and depends on the rules, but that's the thing. The more story you tell, the more rules get laid. And rules, while they are guiding, they're also ultimately restrictive. And as I said, this is a problem that compounds. Because initially, continuity isn't really that big a problem. But once you start getting on to years, and especially in anything where the property changes hands, there are reasons that reboots happen in all forms of media. Whether it be comic books, whether it be movies, whether it be television. One of the reasons, and, they, and like I said, there are multiple reasons, but one of the reasons to do a reboot is that the continuity has become so convoluted or so restrictive in terms of what you can or can't do or what has or hasn't been established and what you feel you can actually work with or whether you feel like you have so few options or you have way too many options because so much stuff now exists within this world, rebooting is the way to simplify that. I mean, DC Comics and the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths is kind of the classic example because it was literally meant to simplify the continuity. Because up to that point, continuity in DC Comics kind of existed by accident initially. Characters would occasionally like reference each other or show up somewhere, or they both appear on the cover of an issue where they don't actually appear together. They're in separate stories within that issue. But continuity started happening as, oh, a neat thing. We could actually have these characters interact with each other. But then you have to start creating rules. And whether you mean to or not, whether you actually sit down to actually plan out the rules, rules are being created as you go, just by the nature of the stories that you tell. And to make sense of the rules that didn't fit or didn't make sense, DC eventually created a multiverse and said, okay, look, there's this universe where this continuity is what's going on. There's this universe where this continuity is what's going on. And there's also a bunch of others for the random one-off continuities we've created over the decades. And it was too complicated. It's also arguable that in that case, the reboot was also for uh, the sake of new readers, not necessarily the existing readers, but new ones, because it was intimidating to come in and go, wait, why does this comic have Superman with gray hair and acting differently than this comic where Superman's like in his 30s? Because different continuity, but if you collapse all that down, make it one continuity and reset most of it, well... You can start fresh and you can take it in new directions and you can tell the stories that the continuity didn't let you tell. Of course, there's a lot of hazards with a reboot because one of the traps of a reboot is just to end up retelling the exact same stories again. And because you've eliminated continuity, suddenly, oh, well, we have to reestablish all this stuff. So let's tell Batman's origin for the fifth freaking time, even though it's the same thing and it hasn't changed. So continuity, ultimately, I think I got a side with Yahtzee on this. It's a nice thing to have, but if it's not really there, it's hard to explain why it matters. Again, within the, na the nature of stories that come one right after the other, as opposed to a continuous narrative. Like maintaining continuity between separated stories it can be a nice thing, but it can also really bog you down. And this can go to the most basic and simplest things. One of my favorite film series, it's the Thin Man series. It's a series of uh, detective movies, and they're awesome. They're wonderful. The banter between the two leads, Nick and Nora Charles, is S-tier legendary banter. I love these two as a couple. Is that my drink over there? What are you drinking? Rye. Yes, that's yours. And in the third movie, it introduces a baby. And the baby's fine. But then they get to the fourth movie and the baby's a little older. The fifth movie, they made the wise move of having the uh, two leads basically on vacation and having left the kid in the care of somebody else. But then the sixth movie comes back and, well, 
we establish that they have a kid, so the kid's got to come back, and that kid is dang annoying in that sixth movie. And I suspect probably most of the people making it didn't really want to use that kid, but that was the continuity. they established the kid exists, and they're stuck with him. So just that basic fundamental stuff, something that works as a one-off, suddenly you're stuck with. Something that made sense to wrap up and finish with, suddenly you don't have access to. And the possibilities for what you can do just, it gets wonky. Is there a solution to this? No, not really. But I wanted to talk about it because it's a problem that's compounded in the world of the cinematic universe. These massive sprawling continuities and all these problems have existed in comic books for ages. But they're now getting ported to other mediums. They're getting ported to television. They're getting ported to movies. They're getting ported to the two things crossing over with each other. And it's just difficult to be able to move forward. And it's going to get harder. It's going to get harder and harder for creators to be able to come up with stories that excite them that don't in some way contradict the continuity or that they are, aren't told, well, you can't do that because five movies ago, eight years and five movies ago, we did this and that doesn't really fit. If it's an idea you're passionate about, that's a quick way to lose your passion. And so, again, I don't think continuity is a wicked or awful thing. But I think especially fans who get really hung up on the continuity tend to underestimate the impact continuity has on creators, especially in anything that does not keep the same creative team entry to entry, which is the case of pretty much all these big sprawling franchises I'm mentioning. Continuity is something that I'm going to be contending with in my own way eventually as I work through more novels in my own series. And no promises on when any of these will be out, but it scares me. There's something very scary about thinking I've made this story and it's the story I want to tell and worrying in the back of my head that somebody's going to pick up some little detail that was mentioned in the first book where they're going to be like, wait a minute, but that doesn't make sense. And suddenly I can't just tell the story I want to tell. Not without like coming up with an explanation for why something doesn't fit. That's a draining thought. And I think it'd just be nice if Folks could ease off a little bit, at least in some of the smaller things, some of the little details. Again, if the continuity is good, that's great. I love when the continuity is seamless. But if it isn't, and it's not major, and it doesn't actually fundamentally alter the characters or negate a story, consider letting it go, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, that's my ramble on continuity and why it's appealing, but also kind of dangerous, especially, again, for anything that is long running. It's why stuff reboots all the freaking time. Well, it's part of why. Money's the other reason why, but it, uh, you all know that. What are your thoughts on anything I've just gone on about? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills enables me to do this as my living. If you supported me there, you would have seen this video in advance. And you also get access to things like a Patreon exclusive Discord. Uh, you get to see my docket for what I'm planning to do at the start of every month, etc., etc., etc. But don't worry too much about it. If you are not able to support me there, there's links in the description for other things I do. I mentioned my book. There's a link in the description if you ever want to get a hold of that. Like, share, subscribe also help, but don't worry too much about it. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. In continuity or out of it, you are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. 
My thanks to all my patrons, but in particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Latfula, Sarvis, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Oliver B., Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Emu Delke, Leotha Boyd, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Fernandi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Tim Price, Adam RDL Taylor, Goddess Alita, Alida? Mm, I'm not sure. Ah, David Hall, Shayla Gourley, Rosalind Bennett. You want to hear me mess up your name too? It's in the Patreon perks. I gotta work on that. <laughs>